What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, Shreves at Sneakers.com. I am on a treatment resistant depression kick right now. So we're gonna go ahead and run with it because that's what's on my mind and that's what I have to talk about. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is to cover how to use Primapexol for treatment resistant depression. You might not have even heard of Primapexol, or maybe you have, but most people who in the lay population who, and even sometimes in, in psychiatry, will not really know much about using this medication for treatment resistant depression, but I'm going to talk about it here. So first of all, what is the mechanism of action of Primapexol? So Primapexol is a selective D3, dopamine 3 agonist or, or stimulator, however you want to put it. And it's thought to be related to what we call hedonic drive right? You might hear this term. Some people say, oh, he's a hedonist or whatever. This is the idea behind it. We want to build up the drive for these patients, right? This medication, Primapexol, is FDA approved for Parkinson's disease and restless leg syndrome. So those are two FDA approved indications. Obviously, if we're using Primapexol for depression here, we're going off label. So we're, we're going off label here. So obviously, this is not going to be your first line option. And um, this is maybe difficult to get covered by uh, insurance companies because again, it's off label treatment. Now, there is some evidence to support it. So there's five randomized controlled trials. So five randomized controlled trials indicating the effectiveness of Primapexol in depression as monotherapy, as well as adjunctive therapy, and, in, and even in bipolar disorder as adjunctive therapy for a mood stabilizer, because we know in a lot of cases, people with bipolar disorder have a lot of episodes of depression. So Primapexol, five randomized controlled trials, indicating benefits not only in unipolar depression, but also bipolar depression, either as a monotherapy or as an adjunct therapy. Now, what are the side effects? You might be concerned, like, well, obviously this is off-label, this is a little sketchy, maybe there's a bunch of side effects that you have to be concerned about. Okay, so the side effects, most common, nausea, hypotension, which is low blood pressure, and fatigue. Those are the three big ones. So it's actually a relatively mild side effect profile, not too bad, right? And what you really want to do with this medication to avoid a lot of those side effects and to avoid complications of those side effects is you want to give Primapexol at night before the person goes to bed. So give the dose at night. That's the best time to give it. And that's how you avoid some of those side effects like the low blood pressure, the nausea, and the fatigue. If you're fatigued when you're going to bed, it's okay. It doesn't make a difference. It's not gonna interfere with your life. Now, how do we start the medication? So the starting dose is somewhere between 0.125 to 0.25 milligrams at night. So you're gonna get, so it's very low doses. These are small doses. They're not even a milligram, right? They're fractions of a milligram here. And you're going to give that at night and you're going to raise that dose by 0.25 milligram every five to seven days towards a target dose of somewhere between 0.75 and two milligrams at night. So titrate slowly, give the medication at night, and look to get somewhere in the dose range of three quarters of a milligram or 0.75 milligrams to two milligrams. Another thing I want to caution people about with this medication, if they're asking, if they're going, if they're taking it, or if they're going to be talking to a doctor about it, watch for what we call hedonistic homeostatic dysregulation, HDD. Okay? And what does that mean? That can be things like pathological gambling. So if somebody's on this medication and they start gambling excessively, this can be a problem, right? And this could be related to the medication specifically because of the receptors that we are targeting, these D3 receptors, these dopamine receptors. Because dopamine is involved in a lot of the, especially in the addiction pathways. So if you're thinking about pathways in the brain, ventral tegmental area, nucleus accumbens, these are dopamine-based pathways, and they can cause people to do things that they otherwise would not normally do. Things like pathological gambling or pathological shopping. And what I mean by that is somebody spending more money than they actually have, running up significant credit card debt, going to the store and buying that new car that they should never have bought. So this can be a, a serious issue to watch out for, and you certainly want to be cautious. With that said, that concludes the video on Primafexol and how to use it for treatment-resistant depression. If you guys have questions or comments, drop them below. I'm happy to answer them. And um, please like and subscribe to the channel so we can keep making new content.